Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to be having a look at the new Revo Point Mini 2 and having a look at if it really is worth upgrading to it. So a few weeks ago I was having a look at the Revo Point Range 2, a 3D scanner designed for scanning larger objects and having a look at just how good it is at scanning those larger objects and the detail it can give. And you can see from a couple of clips of that just how well it does, but I did get asked by quite a lot of people in the comments section about what we'd do if we wanted to scan something smaller, such as miniatures or even just smaller parts of an object that we want to capture in more detail. And luckily the Rover Point Mini 2 is just coming out and we can have a look at just what this is capable of doing. So the Mini 2 is specifically designed for scanning smaller objects. And we can see from its statistics that it's very good at it. It's got an accuracy of 0.05 millimeters and a precision and then fuse distance of the mesh of 0.02 millimeters, meaning that you're gonna get a really, really accurate scan. And as you can see from this first scan that I did of a Titan head, it really doesn't disappoint. It scans everything very accurately to a really high level of detail. And as you can see from the final result, it gives something that looks absolutely fantastic. And I'm sure you're going to see loads of videos and pictures like this, including on RevoPoint's website and advertising, showing the sort of objects you can scan and the really fine detail that you can get from it. And I'll be showing you videos of what results I get with the Mini 2 scanner, but for a lot of people, that's not going to be the main question you should be asking. The question is, if I look at the statistics of this compared to the Mini 1, where's the improvement here? Is this actually any better? Bearing in mind for these scanning statistics, they're the same. So am I actually gonna get any better results? And when this arrived and I cracked it open, that was the thing that I was really excited to find out. Obviously after the standard of getting rid of the stupid head model that they insist on wasting space on in every single one of their really nicely molded cases. So let's start off with the first thing that stood out for me after trying out the range two, and that was that in a similar upgrade, the Mini 2 has also got a larger frame capture than the Mini 1. Now this feels like it shouldn't make too much of a difference when scanning smaller objects, but it really does. What it means is that as it's scanning a single object, when it's looking for features or markers to orient itself and keep tracking, it can simply see and find more of these markers in each frame, which is gonna make it more accurate. And really importantly for saving time, if I want to get a whole object or more detail, instead of having to start a new scan, I can simply move the object around so I get a better angle. And because the Mini 2 can see more of these markers as it starts scanning again, it's gonna orient itself really quickly, even if you flipped that object entirely over. In previous models, I'd normally have to do this in two totally separate scans and then start trying to merge them together. So that's a pretty big deal for me. The other thing that I think attributes for the increase in scan quality for the Mini 2 over the Mini is that it's got these LED lights. Now they're actually meant to improve the color quality that you get when trying to add a color texture to your scans, but anecdotally I found these make a really big difference when scanning as well. For example, when scanning this Titan head, the original Mini had real problems getting the details in some of the recesses, whereas having these LEDs really sets up the light to be pretty much perfect from exactly the angle you want it, meaning you'll capture a lot of this detail. Now, if you've got some gaping chasm in your miniature, no, it's not gonna capture that because no scanner would. But as I say, for me, this has made a big improvement for the amount of detail that I can capture on those recessed parts. And if we bring this into Blender, hopefully you can see the level of detail on some of these recesses like the visor and how clean this looks, especially on this one side where I've just done about 30 seconds worth of cleanup in Blender. This really is capable of making some fantastic models. And sometimes people are worried that the images on a brand's website are exaggerated. So hopefully it shows that this one that's on the advertising is more than doable. And in fact, it's actually probably pretty easy thanks to these LEDs. From this point on, most of the changes to the Mini 2 are things that are gonna improve your quality of life, but not necessarily the scans themselves, though they do make things a lot easier. The first is the addition of the Mini USB-C as the cable at the back. This is just nice because it's really easy to get hold of those, whereas the old cable seemed pretty unique to the Revo Point scanners. And it also makes it really easy to connect to the mini handle that you can buy separately that acts as a power pack or just any generic power pack, which is great. And this combines with the other two additions to give you a really nice workflow to use with this scanner. The biggest of which is something that I've hyped up with other scanners that I've seen with this. And this is that you're no longer trapped to your computer by cables. Instead, the Mini 2 is equipped with Wi-Fi 6, which means you can quickly find it in your Wi-Fi settings on your computer and connect it that way. What I love about this is you can scan things on the other side of the room where your table's conveniently placed. You're not tripping over wires or anything like that. And it really makes it much more convenient to just get out your scanner just to scan something as a minor task instead of making it a big deal. 
And this combines fantastically with the fact that there's three buttons on the back of the Mini 2, not just the start button, which means you can actually change the exposure so you can do everything from the scanner itself. And this will allow you to capture details more easily on larger objects, aided by the Mini 2 having an IMU. I had to Google this, but effectively it's what you're doing as you calibrate it when you set up your Mini 2. And it means the scanner's aware of its own position in space, which again, anecdotally seems to really help it track and work out what direction it's pointing on the object you're scanning, meaning you're going to get less tracking errors. For example, when I was scanning this carapace, I identified on the back that some of the detailing here wasn't particularly nicely scanned. So you can see me here picking up the Mini 2 to get it at a better angle, quickly fiddling with the exposure settings using those buttons, and taking advantage of the LEDs, I could quickly take just a couple of scan frames. Now you can see once again how quickly the tracking picks up on that because we've got that wider frame size. And using the start and stop button on the scanner means you don't get excess scans causing overlap. And you can see how that's improved the scan overall. Now I do want to show how these scans look in Blender because, well, because this is a Blender channel mostly. And that is what I use my 3D scans for. So we'll start with the carapace as that's what I was just scanning. And as you can see, it's got pretty nice detail where we want it. We've got all of the rivets being captured really nicely. We've even captured the join between these different plates. And if I come back to the back where we've got the area that I took a little bit of time to scan extra, you can see how much of a difference it makes. We can get right deep into these crevices because those LED lights pick them up really nicely. And that is a really good quality scan. If I want to add some objects to this to make some add-ons, which is what I'm using these scans for, this is going to be really precise. And you can see this is a really nice smooth surface that we've got here as well. There is very little noise to be dealt with. Then we come to the Dreadnought. Now I do want to preface this by pointing out we've got some really big holes just here because no one in their right mind would normally scan a whole Dreadnought model like this in one go. You'd scan the torso, probably scan the legs separately and then the weapons separately as well because even with those LED lights, trying to get into this gap is just too much. But again, we've got really nice detailing on the front. And we've got all of those feather details and rivets. We've got the inside of the sarcophagus viewport, which without those LED lights, you're not gonna be getting either. And that's really helped us getting all the detail on the back of these legs. And we don't get any big holes where normally you would get holes in these areas. And it's even managed to scan through to those pistons. If you have a look on the legs, through the back there, there is a little bit of noise that would need cleaning up, but that's not a lot to do. And the fact that we've got that central piston is really impressive. And then finally over to our head that we've got over here from the Titan. And again, really, really good quality scan. A tiny little bit of cleanup here that would be needed on some of these joins. That's just because there was a little bit of overlap because I did try doing this as two separate objects and merging them together. And you can see why we want to avoid that if at all possible. Though, again, this side has been cleaned up and you can see how easily that's been made into a nice series of smooth surfaces. And honestly, that cleanup is as easy in Blender as just going into sculpt mode and using the smooth tool to smooth that area out. So it is just honestly seconds worth of work. But this literally was the first scan I did with this scanner. And this was just to test how well it would get those internal details. Again, something that this wouldn't pick up without those LEDs. And I think having scanned with it a couple of times now, I'd actually do a vastly better job if I did scan this again. But you can see we've got no missing features here. I scanned this from all angles. And the reason I had to merge this together was because I actually had to use BluTac to hold this up. So there wasn't an option of just moving around with this. And if you would be interested in a video on how we can use RevoScan to take two separate scans and then merge them together like this, it's really easy. The software's really good. So that's the RevoPoint Mini 2. Is it an automatic upgrade if you've got the Mini? Potentially not. If you just scan things on a turntable that don't have particularly deep crevices, I don't think you need to. In a similar way, you don't need to constantly go out and buy the new iPhone if the new features don't do anything for you just because it's got a slightly different shaped screen. Now, for me, the changes are actually a really big deal. I think it really improves the way that I'm going to be able to scan and the detail I'm going to be able to get, but that is on my use. Now, if you go to the description, there is a link there that you can use to find this. And I'll keep that section up to date with any discounts that are associated with that link because they will vary from time to time. Please do give the video a like if you found it useful and have a great day.